Hey, good evening. It's Thursday, October 24th, and welcome back to Everyday Talk 24-7. I'm looking at first, 2 Corinthians 7 one, a passage which I mentioned last night has had a very pivotal role in my life and clarified a lot of things for me. And for the last 40 years, it's been something that um, God has used as kind of a bedrock in my life to help me think through things, to understand exactly what is the Bible's message. And this, it's this. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit and strive for perfection out of reverence to God. It's a beautiful compilation of words here. I love the particular translation I mentioned last night. It's from uh, the uh, 1974 edition of the uh, NIV Bible, which is uh, long since passed. They've got several other improvements since then. I'm not sure they are, but anyway. But I particularly love this this uh, translation in, uh, from 1974. So, last night we looked at the first por portion. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves. So the point is, I don't purify myself first, and then I get the promises. Rather, I'm involved in this process of growing, of sanctification, of obeying, because I have the promises. I don't earn that. Rather, the promises are given to me, and I respond with obedience. I respond out of love. So the second portion, then, let us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Well, how do we do that? What is that about? Because it's, it's something that Paul is urging us to do. But if we go about it in the wrong sense, a passage like this is, a passage like this is only going to frustrate us. How can I do the right things? I, I, how do I do that? Well, a very common way is to look at the Bible and look at life as a set of lists and rules to follow. So if we have an adequate set of rules, then I'll know what to do and I won't mess up. The problem is, these rules are man-made and they have limitations. They won't help us in every situation. However, living for the honor of God will help us in every single situation. Let me give you a couple of examples here. One is from I found uh, on the internet from uh, it's called The Mom's List, and she has 20 helpful things here for our rules to follow that she's made up in her home. No violence. That includes hitting, scratching, biting, kicking, and throwing things. No arguing or talking back. Sounds pretty straightforward, right? <laughs> Until it doesn't work. And now we have a problem. We've broken the rule. What are we going to do? You know, later on it says, always clean up after you make a mess. Be polite and respectful to everyone. I could not agree more. But is this how I purify myself? This is how I encourage my children to do the right thing. Because the problem is, you see, even the mom that wrote the list, she's going to break them at times. And that's the problem with the human list. There's a weakness to it. So that's not going to purify us. Another uh, very common, popular use of rules right now is Jordan Peterson. He even got a book, 12 Rules for Life. And here, here they are. <laughs> Again, these things are not, for the most part, not bad things. But do they help us? Stand up straight with your shoulders back. In other words, carry yourself well. Don't let your children do anything that makes them dislike, makes you dislike them. What happens when they do? See, we're missing the component of grace here. In the last two, 11 and 12, do not bother children when they're skateboarding. He's talking about letting children be themselves. What happens when they do dangerous things when they skateboard? And the last one, pet a cat when you encounter one on the street. 
And then he said, if you can't find a cat pat, get a dog. Get our focus off of ourselves. Those are helpful things, but they don't get rid of the garbage that's within and the struggles that we have. So that's not how we purify ourselves. Rather, as Paul says just a little bit earlier, honor God. In 1 Corinthians 10, verse 30, he says this. You probably know it. You've probably heard it quoted a number of times, but I'm going to read it for you right now just so we can get a handle on it. So have to find it here. Hang on. Uh, just about there. So, but, all right. So, in chapter 10, verse 30, he says this. So, whether you, talking about rules and regulations, so whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. You see, that allows me, when I stumble, to know I'm living in the grace of God. See, there's not a situation that you and I are going to encounter that if I ask the question, how can I bring honor to God's name by this action? That will, that will help us. That will help us purify ourselves from everything that contaminates body and spirit. Rules contaminate us because they make us think we can do it in our own strength. See, this list of rules from this mom and uh, Jordan's list of rules here, they're all things you can do without Christ. That is a trap for us. We need to be confronted with the truth of God, returning good for evil. I can't do that in my own strength. You can't do that in your own strength. But with the power of Christ, we can do that. We can do the unexpected if our goal is to bring honor to God, honor to Christ. Paul tells us in Colossians, let the word of Christ dwell richly within you. Love of God is what purifies us from the things that contaminate body and, soul and spirit. And we could talk literally weeks about this. But it's got to boil down to this one true principle. Am I going to live for God to show him that I have been blown away with gratitude? Or am I going to try and keep a list of rules and things to make myself acceptable? See, that's the trap. And that's what Paul is urging us to get away from. Since we have these promises, dear friends, let us purify ourselves of everything that contaminates body and spirit. And then tomorrow we'll look at the last phrase, and let us strive for perfection and a reverence for God. There's some really cool things there as well. Again, I would love your thoughts, your feedback on this, because it's been such a powerful passage for me. I'd like to have that be the same for you. Thank you for being here. It's an honor and a privilege, and uh, Lord willing, we'll see you tomorrow. Good night. Thank you.